Thank you, Lisa. I really appreciate it. Um, and welcome. We're, we're glad uh, we could join you all virtually today. Um, you know, virtually is, it isn't too big of a deal for us. We, we really wanted to be there in person at, at your conference, but when things got switched virtually, like we can still do what we were, we were planning to do because we are solely uh, based in that with the Virtual Farm Trips program. So again, my name is, is Dan Toland. I'm the Virtual Farm Trips Manager at Shiftology Communication. I am joined by the boss, CEO, and, uh, and founder of Shiftology Communication, Melanie Wilt. Uh, before we dive too deeply into uh, the Virtual Farm Trip and, and what we do, I'd love for Melanie just to take a, a minute to, to explain who Shiftology is and, and what we do. Sure. Well, Shiftology Communication is a full service uh, marketing communication firm. We're actually based in Springfield, Ohio. Um, I started the firm in 2008. My background is very similar to Dan's. I'm an AgCom grad from Ohio State. I'm a farm girl from Clark County, Ohio. And I'm looking right out of my office over to uh, a building across the block that A.B. Graham held his first agricultural meeting for Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, which is now called 4-H. So uh, we're really proud to be here at, in the birthplace of 4-H. And we have a strong agricultural heritage, but we also, you'll probably hear some cars zooming by too, because we have an office in downtown Springfield. Um, just a little bit of background on Shiftology Communication. Um, we're a small uh, boutique agency. There's six of us. And our focus has really been on science communication. Um, just innovating in how we use science as the base of how we communicate, but also, you know, using our science to communicate about science-based things like food and agriculture, like healthcare. And we find that once we are able to teach people that communication is really the science of creating meaning, that we're able to connect better with audiences and help um, our clients and organizations that we work with in the food and agriculture industry in particular better connect. So one of those things that we try to do is to innovate around agricultural communication. And I think the best example of that is our virtual farm trips program that Dan has spearheaded and, and grown and really perfected over these last few years. So um, interestingly, when all this COVID craziness hit, uh, we were well positioned to be able to begin live streaming and doing some additional things because there was such a, a serious need for the kinds of things we do. So not only do we do the virtual farm trip program, we conduct other virtual experiences, much like what you're doing right now uh, with, with virtual webinars. We do a lot of work in leadership and workforce, and we're also a traditional marketing communication uh, agency. So we do all of those things that you, you would expect to see out of a, a public relations or communication agency. So that's a little bit about Shiftology and hopefully that gives you some background that sets the stage for Dan to talk about our, a program that we're really, really proud of, which is our virtual farm trips. Thanks, Melanie. Uh, really appreciate that. And, and yeah, it is something we're proud of. It's something that's uh, it's grown organically over the years. Um, this started way back. Uh, I used to work for the Ohio Farm Bureau. It started back in about 2010, 2012. Uh, we had a, a local Farm Bureau uh, organization director that wanted to connect um, with, with a pork farm. So we had a pork farmer connect with uh, the organization director for the Farm Bureau, and then they connected with another person in the supermarket through Google Hangouts. And we had this little, just this little Google Hangout chat that was live for a couple classrooms in a single county, which was a, a pretty cool experience. Um, in 2013, uh, I started working with, with Melanie with Shiftology Communication and the Ohio Port Council approached us at, at that point and said, um, you know, we'd like to be able to build upon that and, and bring the farm to the classroom instead of trying to find ways to bring the classroom always out to the farm. So we started a pilot program. It was, it was, four, uh, it was four trips in the spring of 2014, I believe it was. And um, we did that through Google Hangouts, pretty rudimentary the way we did it, but it worked very, very well. Um, and then from there, it's kind of grown. The next year we got another, uh, we, we did a full slate of 10, 12, 15 uh, trips for that port council. And then another port council joined in, then another, then we got a beef council. So all of a sudden we had a bunch of, uh, uh, of people turn to us wanting to do these trips and kind of start building this program where we've gotten to the point now where we've transitioned to using Zoom, we're using special equipment. We'll talk about some of that uh, shortly here. But um, what we've done is we've built this platform and, and this, uh, this structure that's in place now that can be replicated. 
Uh, we, we found out, we've, you know, we've jumped through these hurdles to learn how to do these trips successfully and to help others do them. So what I like to tell folks is we provide the, tech, the technolog technological and logistical assistance um, to help you do what you do best with these, with these trips. So we, 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 we I say we, we put up the studs, pour the concrete, put up the studs, and we let our, our partners decorate the program how we see fit. So we'll, we'll go through that here uh, momentarily. Um, I got a few slides I, I do want to share with you here and talk about the program. I do see we have a, a question about are we a for-profit or, or non-profit agency. We are a for-profit uh, organization that does um, work with many nonprofits. As I've, as I've mentioned, most of our clients are um, agricultural organizations, commodity groups, checkoff programs, uh, stuff like that. So, yeah. okay. I think it's important uh, on that question too, just to, yeah, we are, I mean, we are a, a business that, uh, you know, is established in a for-profit uh, S corporation, but we, I'm the sole owner of the organization and the whole reason that I ever started this business was to help farmers. So, um, you know, we probably, it's probably a bargain because <laughs> right. we care about the end goal, which is helping make sure that as many people have an authentic real farm experience as possible. So. Yeah. And that's really the gist of, of the program auth authenticity, uh, and, and being real. Um, so again, we are using the Q&A box. I saw a couple comments about the about the chat being uh, uh, being disabled. That that is on purpose. We do use the Q&A box when we do the tours, so you're getting the experience of kind of how we handle things during our tours uh, using Zoom. But um, why virtual farm trips? Well, there's lots of challenges, and we have even more now. Uh, you know, challenges uh, when it comes to budgeting, when it comes to logistics, security, liability. Not only on the school side of things, but also on the farm side of things, when it comes to biosecurity, having people on the farm, in and out, how do we, how do we do all that? So um, it's a challenge to, to do traditional field trips uh, to the farm anymore. And even now with, with COVID-19, we have to worry about public health as part of that as well. So um, it, it's all about providing that, that real um, authentic experience and bringing the farm to the classroom as much as we can, increasing that agriculture uh, programming in the classroom. Um, why does this work? Well, because it's unscripted, unfiltered, and, and unrestricted. It's authentic and transparent. Um, authenticity and transparency are the, at the heart of our program. This isn't Hollywood produced, and you're going to see this uh, shortly. Um, you know, it's not overly produced. It's not overly edited. It's not over scripted. Um, we don't really block access to the, what people want to see on the farm. It's real, live, engaging, behind the scenes, and that's what really gets the buy-in uh, for what we for what we do with the program. Um, it is that unpolished authentic look behind the, the, the barn doors, which um, increases the authenticity all the more. So it's not static overproduced type of stuff. Every trip is different. Um, it's also not virtual reality, which I have my own opinions on. I think it's kind of kind of gimmicky, um, but this, this is real. Um, and it's audience directed. The cool thing about this is the audience asks questions and things will move in certain directions, talk about certain topics, or will show certain things based upon what that audience um, is asking us. So we do have that, that engagement and, and that buy-in because of that. And also because it's not overproduced, um, it's able to be uh, done efficiently and replicated. So based upon the cost that we, that we charge our partners to do this at a relatively affordable cost to reach a bunch of students, we've actually had um, some of our partners host trips with a ton of students that they were able to reach at a cost of less than 50% or 50 cents per student from their investment in the program, which you can't do that doing a, a traditional field trip. Um, so it, that, that's really cool that it can be efficient and effective and have that you know, minimal investment with that maximum engagement potential in the trips. Customization is also key with the trips that we do uh, for our partners. Every, every partner, every trip has a, a different goal or a different audience different approaches to them as well. Um, so again, we put up the studs in the walls and we let our partners decorate how we see fits. We've done, you know, up to about the last year, most of our trips have been for students, classrooms. Um, but we've also done trips from, from agricultural, with agricultural professionals joining, veterinarians, different careers included, feed experts, nutrition specialists, things like that. Um, retail and food processing professionals have been involved uh, as audiences of this trip and it's becoming uh, we're doing a lot more of that type of stuff now with COVID 
uh, hidden away it is. We are actually doing more stuff for um, buyers, processors, retailers. Uh, we are also working with uh, key niche consumer audiences or influencers, if you will, uh, from health professionals, dietitians, bloggers, sports medicine folks, you name it. Um, this program has really been, been pieced together in a way where you can reach anybody, which is, which is really cool. And there's a lot of variety in the programming. So we're not just going to one farm. We can go to multiple buildings on the same farm. We've done that in Michigan where we had a veterinarian in the, in, um, in the calf barn and the farmer in, in a different barn. Um, we've had variety within a single commodity. So we've done a trip recently to a cow-calf operation in New York. And at the same time, we had a feedlot connected in um, Iowa to have one trip to show the life cycle uh, of the cow from, from calf all the way up to where it ends up on your plate. Um, and we can showcase multiple commodities at the same time during trips. Really, you know, we're just limited by our creativity. Uh, we, can, we can do pretty much anything with these, which is, which is really cool. Uh, we mainly conduct these in, in two ways. Uh, we, can reach, we can do a, a high reach type of trip, like kind of what, what we're doing here, where we're connected via a webinar format, where everybody can see and hear what we're doing and saying, um, and can chat with us interactively, whether it's a chat box, a Q&A box, we can do polls. Uh, things like that. And I will pop up a poll later for you to see kind of how that works during the tour as well. Uh, so that allows us to work with our partners to reach a lot of people at one time. So we've had trips with uh, American Dairy Association Northeast where we've had upwards of 10,000 students um, connected through their classrooms on a high reach uh, tour like that, like what we're doing now through a webinar. We can also do high engagement tours where it's a, a lower audience. Usually it's a few hundred, anywhere between 100 to uh, seven, 800 um, students connect at that time. When I say students, those are not connections. Typically, traditionally how we do this is we'll have all these students gathered around a classroom or an auditorium or something like that. Uh, so it'd be one connection that we're working with where we actually would have uh, the camera and microphone on. So uh, the, the kids are able to see themselves on, on the trip. They're able to see the other classrooms across the country or the state on the trip and interact and wave and say hello to each other, but also be able to ask questions directly uh, to the farmer or to the, the host of the, the program, who's usually a staff member from the commodity group uh, that we're working with. So it's, um, while it's lower reach, it's much higher on the gate and the engagement scale because you can ask questions and show all the cameras and see kids raising hands or showing fingers for how much, how old do you think this pig is or something like that, you know, how many months old how many pounds, you know, those type of things. So very high on the engagement side with those type yeah. of trips. Yes. All right, sorry to interrupt, but you mentioned about the, um, the schools um, engaging with the farmer through these things. And I think I, we probably just need to reiterate, maybe we didn't answer this question before when it was asked, we do not charge schools to right. participate in virtual farm trips. They are always free. Um, the cost of doing the virtual farm trips is, covered by the commodity checkoff programs. For the most part, we do have a sponsor here and there that will cover them. We have actually been approached by some schools asking if they could develop some things, but those wouldn't be necessarily virtual farm trips. So we've been asked to look into how we could do virtual experience or recruitment or career days or things like that. But uh, uh, hopefully that explains that and answers that, answers that question for the person who is asking. Right, and we've even had a STEM school sponsor a trip as well. I don't know if you mentioned that, Melanie, but uh, we did have a, a STEM school, local STEM school, go together with a, the um, State Sheep Producers Association to uh, co-sponsor a, a trip that was produced for everybody across the state, actually across the nation, to an Ohio sheep farm that we did, which was really cool. Um, but yes, we have the, these two basic types of, I would call them private uh, trips that we do where everybody's connected within Zoom itself. But then as, as Melly mentioned, with the onset of COVID, everybody's like, hey, can we still do our trips? I'm like, oh yeah, there's opportunity here. We can certainly do that because we don't really ever live stream everything. Well, now we live stream most of our things because everybody's learning from home at, at the moment. So, and I, I think this has become a much, um, much more uh, a part of the future of our tours as well as doing live tours. So uh, streaming, um, connecting Zoom directly to uh, Facebook to YouTube and streaming live through those sources as well. So people can tune in from anywhere and really that expands your audience as well. So uh, for example, uh, the first week that students had to learn from home in Ohio, the Ohio Port Council and, and uh, Shiftology worked together to produce a live 
streaming uh, virtual farm tour to an Ohio hog farm. And this young man uh, just graduated high school and it's just fantastic is what he, at, at what he does and, and sharing his story. And it was really, really well received. Um, some stats from that. I mean, this thing, the nice thing about this is it lives on Facebook. It's viral in nature. You can boost it and promote it, send it out there. And, you know, we've had, it's reached over 33,000 people since it's been published out there. The, the, the post and the video itself has had over 10,000 engagements. We have over 20,000 views, it's been shared hundreds of times. And as you can see there, we've had comments. People watched it live from the United Kingdom, from New York City. They, they were all over the place. So, I mean, just expanding the reach and the impact of your programming as well is, is fantastic for, and, and the sky's the limit with this type of stuff. So, um, you know, with, with our virtual farm tours, we we're far, farm trips, we have, we have contracts and the ability to do trips and all but I think three states now east of east of the Rockies, but that doesn't mean that we don't do trips west either. I mean, we I, I sit at home and do these. Uh, our commodity groups sit in the office, sit at home, and then we connect from the farm. That can be done anywhere, and we like it's, we've had this global reach uh, because of this as well. So um, every trip is also recorded and posted on on YouTube or the preferred social media uh, channel of our partner's choice, which helps extend the shelf life of that program. So we got some videos out there that have thousands of views on them. Uh, actually on our website, virtualfarmtrips.com, we do have a, uh, a page that is just fully dedicated to all of our past recordings. So if any of you need want to access those, watch those, those are available on our website. And all this can be done with just the farmer. And you'll see this in just a second when we connect with our friends in Michigan. All it takes is a couple pieces of equipment, a little bit of practicing, a little, a lot of dress rehearsal time and, and a lot of coordination on how things are gonna operate. And that's where we come in. Um, but it, you know, we use some technology that includes noise canceling Bluetooth headsets, which are fantastic. A tractor can go by and you couldn't hear at all on the farm. And then mobile gimbals, which you'll see kind of what those do here shortly. A mobile gimbal, all that does is uh, it stabilizes your video. So instead of holding it with your hand and being very shaky, it really smooths things out and makes it seem more professionally produced. So our client list, is, our partner list is growing. I, I think it's probably grown since I've even made this slide. Uh, and we're just, we're just thrilled that all these groups are, are on board with us. They see the value in the program and, and what, it's, what it's doing and, and the, the future that it holds. So speaking of partners, I can see uh, Amy is joining us here from uh, United Dairy Industry of Michigan. So we have Amy with, uh, is, is the youth wellness manager there. And Jolene Griffin will be joining us as well. And they will be uh, connecting with us here to do our, our virtual farm tour. Uh, this will be a bit of a unique virtual farm tour because um, you'll be getting an experience that, that teachers and classrooms often do. It'll, it'll look and feel like a virtual farm tour, but we'll also be talking through kind of how we do things and, and what it takes to produce that. Some of the best practices and stuff we use. Again, ask any questions through the Q&A box. Um, Melanie and Amy will both kind of uh, operate as your moderators for this. And um, Amy, I'll turn it over to you and let you, let you take it away and, and tell us a bit about, um, you know, United Dairy Industry of Michigan's Virtual Farm Trips Program, how it came to be, and um, what your experience has been. Take it away. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. Um, hello, everyone. As he said, I'm a youth wellness manager at United Dairy Industry of Michigan, and we promote on behalf of Michigan's dairy farmers and processors. And our farmers are very passionate about nutrition education. So we work with schools providing resources, materials, all, all free. And another thing we get to do is help the dairy farmers tell their story. So we have been wanting to do virtual tours for a while. We talked about it. Everybody was worried about the technology piece, really. Will there be a good connection out in the farm? Um, would we have the right equipment? Do we need a bunch of expensive equipment? And our counterparts out in Northeast, as Dan mentioned, did a tour and we watched that and we were just blown away. We thought it looked simple. We thought we want to do this. So we contacted Dan and decided to try a pilot tour and we started with that. He mentioned that we had two camera crews going. And again, our camera crews are just phones. It's very, very simple. Um, and that was such a huge success. We decided to do more in the fall. And this spring with the pandemic, we were able to also do 
a tour that went through Facebook, much bigger reach. So we weren't just reaching the school children and their teachers, now we're reaching families. And it was just, it, just a great turnout, a lot of great interaction during the tour through questions and stuff. So we just love that interaction and we're looking forward to a couple more tours late this summer with actually university students, some dietetic students, and they usually go to the farm, but with their not knowing what's gonna happen, they decided to just do virtual tours as well. And so they're excited because they'll be connecting from all over the United States and just a great way to give them all of that same experience. So we're, we're really excited about doing that as well. And so for, the, for today, um, we're really excited to bring the farm to you. So we are gonna go out to Jolene Griffin. She also works at United Dairy Industry of Michigan, but she is today on her family's farm. So hi, Jolene. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Amy mentioned, Jolene Griffin, my family has a dairy farm. And so promoting dairy, talking about cows, talking about milk has been part of my, my entire life. And so at United Dairy Industry of Michigan, I get to help farmers talk to people about what they do and the passion they have for their cows. And, and as Amy mentioned, one of those ways is through farm tours. And um, when Dan approached us this spring about doing something live, you know, one of our concerns was, well, would we be able to go out to a farm? Would we be able to help the farmer? And then I was like, well, wait a minute. I know a farm. I can do it. <laughs> like, I can, I can just go and, and, and do this. So, um, so that's what we were able to do. I think it was about two months ago this week, we hosted a live tour. And so we're going to walk you through a little bit of what the kids saw that day and, and actually families because that tour, um, we, we did uh, target a lot of teachers, but we also know that a lot of families watched it as well. And, you know, as Dan mentioned, these are not perfect. Um, I've got a tractor driving uh, right by me that you probably can't hear uh, because of the noise canceling headphones. I've got some calves <laughs> that are rubbing up against me. Uh, so if you see me moving a little bit, they're like really excited. They're uh, licking my shirt. So this is real life. And, and I think that's what we love too, because when we do our farm tours, you know, people are able to see, they're able to see the fact that we're headed out to the field again. You know, we've got those tractors running by, we've got these curious calves and I'll flip the camera around in a little bit so you can see them. Um, and so being able to do these live tours helps us to be able to showcase some of that when people are watching us from their classroom or from uh, their, the living room with their families as well. So I'm gonna flip it around. Sorry, they keep bumping me. This is this is real life, folks. <laughs> so um, we like to start with calves because who doesn't love calves? Um, I know that was my first job on our farm was feeding calves and caring for them. And right now, I've actually oops, I'm gonna I just got bumped. Uh, I'm gonna show you. We've got a calf in here uh, who is drinking milk. We have automatic calf feeders on our farm. We love technology, and so the automatic calf feeder allows that calf to go in and drink when she wants. And then that, that computer will read, who her, read her ear tag, see who she is, and get the right amount of milk for her to drink. And I'm gonna try to, to zoom in on this one who's sleeping um, and not bothering me. Um, but if you can see her ear tag, that computer will know that she's 2810, and it will get that amount of milk ready for her. Um, these, these calves are our future. We've got some right here that are resting and that's what we wanna see. We wanna see them resting on clean bedding. We've got uh, fresh sawdust that was actually put down just yesterday. So they're here, they're resting um, and they're growing. They're gonna be the future of our herd. And you know, the other thing that I like to tell folks about, about our calves is, is that ear tag. That tells us who they are. Kind of like our social security number sticks with us <laughs> throughout our entire life. Uh, that number sticks with these calves as well. So we're able to document when they get vaccinations. You know, if they've been sick, we do give them antibiotics. We work with our vet to give them an, some antibiotics to keep them healthy and get them, get them back to health. So we'll keep track of that. And then um, we'll go down to the cow barn here in a couple minutes and you'll be able to see, see the cows. But uh, we've got books and books and books of, of records of each individual calf throughout her life. Jolene, can you talk for a minute? You've, I, 
you mentioned your noise canceling headphones and I think yeah. you've got a gimbal and an iPhone. What are you, you or an iPad? What are you using to do your videotaping? We've yeah, had absolutely. Come in. Absolutely. The noise canceling headphones, um, you know, those are recommendations that we got from, from Dan and Melanie and their team. Um, and they work so great. Um, I've got those on. The, the gimbal as well, I keep getting bumped because I've got somebody who is sucking on my elbow over here. We're best friends for life right now. Um, and she keeps bumping it. And you can't really see that. Um, it's very minimal moving. And I'm someone who my arms and hands do get tired after a while. So I do shake. And it doesn't, the, the gimbal keeps my hands from not shaking and keeps that camera steady. That way, those of you on the other end of this are seeing something really steady that that video is just going to stay for you and you're not a professional videographer <laughs> no i play one on tv right now <laughs> you do a pretty good job <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you had mentioned the bedding there too and somebody asked about the bedding of choice did you say that was uh shavings yeah so we do have um sawdust uh uh, gosh, see, do you see they're crowding around right here, three of them. Um, <laughs> so for us, uh, the sawdust is uh, the bedding of choice for our calves. When we go down uh, to the cow barn, I will get into the pen and I'll show you uh, there that we do use sand for, for the cows. But we found for, for our calves, the sawdust is best for us um, in this group housing. Um, we do use uh, individual calf hutches. So for the first two weeks of life, the calves are kept in individual hutches. That just helps to ensure that my mom can watch over them and get them the, the amount of colostrum, which is that first milk uh, from their mother. She can make sure that they're off to a healthy start. And we use straw in there. We just found that in the hutches that that works best. I think a lot of dairy farming is research. And you know we are constantly talking with other farmers and here in Michigan, we're lucky to have Michigan State University. I might be biased. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dan and Melanie. Um, but you know, we, we have a lot of research from universities and from, from other folks who we can tap into. And you know, so maybe in five years, we might be using something else. And I think that's the great thing about being in agriculture. We've got that science to back up what we do and to teach us new things and new ways to care for our cows. And Jolene, before the pandemic, when we could have other people at the farm, we actually had a camera person, which is just someone from our staff. Again, it's not a professional <laughs> camera person, but then you can actually see the dairy farmer as they're talking. And then yeah. we would have a second camera getting these close up views like this. So I, I mean, it's great in this situation that we can have, it can be a one person show, but we also like to you know, show the farmer when they're talking because then you can see their passion. Their passion just comes through mm -hmm. as they share because they're the experts. And to see them in their element has been very, very helpful. And all of our teachers love to see that. You mentioned the, the ear tags and the electronic mm -hmm. data that you collect. What other kind of data do you collect on the ear tag that you track for the farm? Yeah, so um, here in Michigan, and I'm trying to get, here, I'll go down to her, um, that white button in her ear, uh, that's her um, radio frequency identification tag. Um, and so that will stay in her ear her entire life. And so, oh, here we go, close up, right? <laughs> um, so that will stay with her her entire life, and that helps with traceability. Um, so those were implemented here in Michigan because of bovine TB, but it's really just been a benefit to help us to be able to track our, our animals. So, um, so that uh, the computer uh, in the, the in the automatic milk feeder uh, will will tap into the RFID tag, and then there's also technology that can be used on it with adult cows. So we we don't have that, but we actually just had a conversation uh, this afternoon about other monitors that we could have on our cows where they would wear like a necklace and it would be able to track how much they're eating, how much they're walking, kind of like pedometers that, that we all have. Um, and then it would track their, their digestion, make sure that they're healthy. And it will tell you these things. That way, if you see, uh, you know, maybe a cow isn't walking as much one day, 
you can run out to the barn and check on her and make sure that she's, that she's feeling okay. Um, but technology really just helps us to take great care of our cows. We've, you know, I tell people, my, my parents were born to be dairy farmers. I don't know what, what else they would do, but they're great with, my mom takes care of the calves, my dad takes care of the cows, my brother takes care of the heifers, which are the teenagers and the crop work. Um, but technology just helps us to do that even better. Thank you. Colleen, we had a question about what breed of cows you have here and what are some of the other breeds out there? <laughs> Yeah, so here uh, we have uh, black and white Holstein. They are the most popular breed of, of dairy cattle in the United States. I think they're about 80% actually. Um, but some other breeds uh, are Jerseys, which are the, the smaller brown cows. Uh, brown Swiss are the large brown cows. Um, and then we've also got Guernseys and, and Ayrshires and Milking Shorthorns. And, and those kind of fall, fall in line like that in, in popularity. So, um, a, you know, kind of a cool thing uh, here on our farm, when my brother and I were in 4-H, we had some friends who uh, had dairy cows, but didn't live on a dairy farm. So we actually milked their cows for them. So on our farm, we have, we've had black and white Holsteins, we've had red and white Holsteins, brown Swiss, Guernseys, and jerseys. We just have never had air shires or milking shorthorns, but, but we've had a little bit of everything here on our farm. Right now, though, we're uh, primarily black and white Holsteins and a few red and white Holsteins, which we might see when we go down to the cow barn. Well, I think maybe we might want to head that way. I think Dan Sounds has good. a video that he was going to show. Oh, yeah, let's look at this calf first. What's a calf? Yeah. <laughs> so you can see she's in there, that computer. She's just going to town, drinking her milk, afternoon snack. Actually, it might be dinner time. <laughs> you want to look inside there at all, Jolene? Or yeah. Or yeah. So I'm going to walk through. Oops. And the, the gimbal's trying to focus here. Um, so this is actually our, where we keep the technology for the, the calf feeders. Uh, this is mixing the milk, keeping it cold. It's actually a refrigerator. Um, and then over here is the computer system. So my mom can come in and scroll through and see who has, eat, who has not eaten in a certain time period. And then she can go out into their pen and uh, check on them. You know, maybe they just fell into a deep sleep or, you know, maybe they aren't feeling well, but she can, it'll flag that to her so she can go out and check on them. And then this is our pasteurizer. So we do use uh, milk from our cows, but we do pasteurize that first. So this will heat the milk up. Um, I think it's 161 degrees for like 35 minutes. Um, I might have those numbers flipped. Um, but so it'll go uh, be pasteurized and then it'll be put into uh, the, the milk holder and it will cool it down and then it will feed that calf. And, and we've actually got four, uh, four pens, so we have four milk feeders for them. That's a lot of great technology you have yes. out there. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, as, yeah. As you're moving and you're talking about this technology, can you talk about whether you have Wi-Fi in the barn and how stable that is for the <laughs> virtual farm trips? We've yeah, so. Questions about that. <laughs> All right, I will try to walk and talk. Um, yeah, so uh, we have not had to tap into the Wi-Fi here. We, we don't have the best uh, connectivity out here. Um, we've just been able to use our, our cell service when we've done these tours. But I know that is a big issue and look, it's a beautiful day behind me. Um, you know, working with, with Dan and team, we do a lot of practice sessions beforehand just to make sure we know which barns we can go in. Um, I'm walking down to the, the cow barn and I'm passing the parlor. And because of our technology tests, we know that we don't get good service in the parlor. So we've uh, captured a video um, showing the milking process because we know we can't be live in there. Let me go ahead and show that video while you're still getting over there. Sure. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that for you. Sounds good. Give me just a second. 
everybody get an idea of what it looked like. We can mix in pre-recorded videos. I threw up a couple uh, images there a little bit ago as well. So we can, you know, we're always preparing for plan B. What do we need in case internet connectivity is rough or in case something goes wrong on the farm? What, what do we, uh, what can we show? So let's, uh, we'll pull up this video here. Let's see if it wants to play for me. There it goes. Here in the milking parlor, we're going to show how we milk one of the cows. First, we wipe off the sand. We want to make sure that her udder is clean. And then we put on a sanitizing mix, again, to make sure that we're cleaning off the entire udder. We're sanitizing the teeth. That's where the milk is going to come out of. We're going to wait for a minute and let that sit on the udder. Let it make sure everything gets nice and sanitized, nice and clean. And then we use an individual towel for each cow. So we're going to clean off that sanitizer. This towel gets used for one cow. And then they are cleaned in between each milking shift. So once that's done, now it's time to attach the milking unit. And that's a little bit of a vacuum, a little bit of a suction, so that you know on each individual piece. Cows have four teeth. And then you can see that milk coming out right there. And we can move over here. You can see the milk coming out of there. And it's going through the pipe. It's going to foul that pipe into that stainless steel pipe right there. And then that's going to go into the milk tank where it's going to be cool. And we'll talk more about that. Each cow is milked for five to seven minutes. And once that milker comes off, it'll come off automatically when the milk flow stops. Then we're gonna put more sanitizer on each of the teeth, each of the quarters. And then that cow's gonna go back out and drink and eat and rest. Thanks for showing that video, Dan. That was uh, great. Jolene, we have a question. How much milk do cows give each day? Yeah, so um, on our farm, our cows actually average about 85 pounds of milk a day. And the, the really cool thing about uh, Michigan dairy farmers, there's 1,200 dairy farmers in our state, and we actually rank number one in milk production per cow. And I, you know, that's a, a good testament to our farmers who care for their cows and make cow care a number a priority, and also, you know, that research. And that continuous improvement of growing the best feed and taking the best care of our cows. It looks good. The, the signal there is just a little bit oh. shaky, but not bad. <laughs> Thanks right. for showing that. We've also had a few questions about what they eat, what the cows yeah. eat and how much. Yeah, so I am actually in the pen with the cows right now. I'm gonna show the sand really quick and then I'll jump out and show um, show the cow feed. Um, but this is the sand that they lay on. You can see they're just kind of lounging around. She's super comfortable. Um, but sand is really convenient here for us in Michigan. We've got plenty of access to it and it helps us um, to keep our cows comfortable. It can conform around them when they lay down. It keeps them nice and cool. And then also for science teachers, it's inorganic. So it's going to help us to make sure that there's no bacteria that's growing in it that can then uh, get near their udder. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk around and I will head on out of the pen. Let me see. I know when we're doing these tours with the classrooms, we will get questions ahead of time with the pre-registration and Dan helps set up that whole pre-registration, ask questions to get a you know survey before and after. And it's just nice to compare the comments before and the comments after each tour. Um, and it's also nice to have those questions ahead of time just to kind of keep it moving. One thing we also like to focus on are some different academic standards for the teachers so they can use this in the classroom. So, and definitely the food, we wanna see that. Tell us all about that. Yeah, so this is a total mixed ration or a TMR. And we call it a cow casserole. Uh, here's someone who wants it. Um, so it's got everything in here that that cow needs. It's balanced to uh, the, the, the needs of the cows in each individual or each of the pens, each of the groups of, of pens that we have. 
So uh, we've got corn, I don't know if you can see that, corn kernel, um, cows eat corn silage, which is the entire stalk of corn. It's the corn kernel, the corn cob, the stalk, the leaves. Um, they are able to digest all of that. We also have hay in here. You can see some of those pieces of hay. And then we also add vitamins and minerals. We want to make sure that we're supplementing that, that diet to ensure that all of her nutrients are met. And, you know, we, we do a lot of tours for registered dietitians. And like Amy said, we're going to do some of those virtually this summer too. And I tell them, you know, our cows eat a better balanced diet than most humans do. They've got every single bite that she's going to eat right there is mixed up. Um, and so it meets all of the, the nutrient needs that she has to then make that milk. How many cows do you have on your farm? Yeah, we milk about 250 cows. Okay. Yep, so, and then we've got, we, we raise every, every, uh, every calf as well. So each cow will have about one calf a year and we'll raise that, that calf until she becomes a member of our milking herd. <laughs> so somebody is asking, it looks like Melissa James is asking, what do you do with the sand when you clean it out of the barn? Do you clean it and reuse it? So we have an opportunity for some environmental questions to be answered in these tours as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we do not reuse uh, the sand. Um, we, we don't have that technology yet. That's another conversation that, that we are having. Um, but some of our, our neighbors do have that. What we do is uh, three times a day, the cows' pens are cleaned. Um, and we always joke with the students, you know, do you clean your rooms that, that often and kind of have fun with that. Um, but we do collect all of the, the manure and the urine and, and the sand. And then we'll be able to apply that to our fields. Um, and then the manure will provide nutrients to help grow that corn and alfalfa and soybeans that, that we grow. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much for showing us your farm today, Jolene. It looks very yeah. beautiful out there on the farm. We we have a lot of other questions, but I know we can't get to all of the <laughs> farm specific questions because this whole this whole time is about so much more. So, uh, Dan, we can we can turn it back to you and Melanie and and wrap up with other questions and issues and stuff that you wanted to address as well. Sure. Well, well, thank you. Uh, thanks again, Jolene. It, it's awesome. I, I love visiting your farm. The connectivity there is, is always fantastic, unless you get down in the sand or you get in the, in the parlor, but we, we always prepare for that, and, and we know that's going to happen. That's why you said, I'll jump in real quick and then jump back out, because you knew it would do that, and that's because we spend that time ahead of time. I think it's important to note, too, that we've been working with United Dairy Industry of Michigan for around a year and they're such experts now. They've jumped in feet first, have, you know, haven't hesitated to take this on and try it and do it. And I'm sure each one gets a little more comfortable for you as a host and a moderator. Uh, but it's, it's so easy to quickly get up to speed with these things. It's great to see how that's taken place in just a few months. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the things we do for each is Jolene and I, or whoever we're, the farmer that we might be working with, we, we develop a run a show. We, you know, figure out what barns we can go into, what areas we want to see. And depending on our audience, if we're doing a K through second grade audience, um, it's going to look different than when we do a high school tour for that audience and in what we talk about and stuff. So we, we definitely plan that ahead of time, um, develop that run a show for us. Um, and as a moderator for me, sometimes I have to feed the farmer questions just to make sure we get the right, the vocabulary that we want to use that, that, so that we're hitting the academic standards and stuff like that. So it's, it's a lot of fun and, and just a great experience for everyone. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, we got an echo. Somebody's microphone is getting an echo, but we get that from time to time too. These are live, <laughs> so we get that. Um, so I think what we want to do, I see there's a lot of questions coming in. I think maybe you know, we have about 10, 11 minutes left. I think it'd be great to answer some of these questions uh, as much as we can. Maybe not all of them farm related, but more about, about the program itself. So um, 
I don't know, Melanie, if you have been, have you been looking through yeah, those? Or I something? have. I can zip through some of these and try to give you answers real quick. So somebody wanted to know if this video would be available to them after the uh, session today. And the answer is yes, it is being recorded. So um, I assume it will be live on or available through YouTube and different channels. So you'll be able to find that. You also can find out about any upcoming virtual farm trips if you want to sign up for one, if you want to share the information with someone, um, www.virtualfarmtrips.com or just Google virtual farm trips, you'll find it'll be the first thing that'll come up. All of our upcoming trips are listed on there with event dates and a link to um, figure that out. Now, some of them are being live streamed, so you might have to go to Facebook or YouTube um, or the uh, host organization's website, but all that information is con contained within virtualfarmtrips.com. I will say we um, are in a little bit of a lull right now with school being out. We do, we do have some we're holding here and there. They might be for private audiences, so they might not be fully listed on that site, but um, we're already starting to get the schedule ready for the fall. So if you start tuning in in August, you're going to see a big list of, of, of trips that's on there that's available. Um, on the, at, at virtualfarmtrips.com, you go down to the screen that says explore trip offerings and there's view upcoming live trips. If you click on view upcoming live trips, that's where we're posting the schedule um, as much as we can. And people have asked about what livestock is available or what kinds of virtual farm trips are available. We currently have sheep, dairy, Swine, beef, soybean. Did I hit them all? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a, we have somebody mentioned fish farms or hatcheries, and we'd love to do that. I think that's an excellent idea. Um, so it's just a matter of us partnering, partnering with the right commodity group to make that happen. And something I think is possible um, with especially organizations like Ag in the Classroom is for you to be the organization that says, hey, we want to do these. And maybe we want to do a package of five of these farm trips over a year. And we want to engage partners from different commodity groups. So as Ag in the Classroom, you're kind of this, you know, the Switzerland of commodities, right? You can talk about all of them. So you could go to your partners and say, hey, you know, we want a little bit of funding to do this and be that point, you know, the pivot point for the program in your state. I know people have asked about Oklahoma and North Carolina and Florida. And, and so all of that is on that website if you wanna find out if there has been a farm trip in your state or if there hasn't been, there could be an opportunity or an opening there. I think there's an opportunity for lots of different commodities in lots of different states. Um, but we do find that we get a lot of uh, attendees from outside the state that is actually hosting it. And that's been great for their numbers and their ability to uh, reach more people. They've also, Dan just told me that we had one commodity group that the number of people they had on their event, it cost them less than 50 cents a person mm -hmm. to reach all of these people. And I thought, you know, if you're looking at return on investment for commodity checkoff programs or programming like that, that's, that's pretty affordable. Other questions were uh, coming in there. Yeah, did we put together? A there was schedule? another one um, about curriculum and how it ties in with the educational programming, and that really depends on the organization that we're working on working with. That's the funder. Some of the organizations are extremely devoted and dedicated to ensuring that their curriculum matches up with state standards for a certain grade level or for a, for a certain range of grade levels. Um, not everybody is though sometimes it's just about you know we just want to educate we want to make sure that the information's out there we have a general idea of what what uh, maybe checks the box of some general health and science and and those kinds of things um but it really just kind of depends on the organization i would say kind of the model of the organizations we work with that does an excellent job of sending information ahead of time, providing worksheets, providing supplemental information would be the Ohio Soybean Council. So if you wanna look at any of theirs, you can see how they do those. Let me also add that the National Agriculture in the Classroom has the curriculum matrix on its homepage. Um, just it's agclassroom.org, search for dairy. We have plenty of lessons about um, dairy lessons that are kindergarten through 12th grade. You can search by grade level, subject area, whatever you may be needing on the, on the topic, uh, it's available to you. So, and by subject area. So science, nutrition. 
social studies, language arts, math, whatever you, you need. We've got a, a lot of dairy materials on our website too. One thing I will mention that uh, in addition to going to our website and seeing the list of trips and stuff to sign up for them, we actually do have a sign up form to get on our list. So uh, it's actually on our COVID-19 page at the moment. So it's right in the middle of our homepage. It says COVID-19 recordings for teachers and students. If you click on that and scroll to the bottom of the page, we do have a, um, a subscription form where you can sign up to be notified when there are tours um, and trips that are available in your state or for your region. Uh, so we do, we do have, um, uh, we do send out emails and, and notifications that go out through the organizations that we work with and through our own listing as well that we'll, we'll share with everybody out there. So if you go on that list, we will make sure that, that you get a notification when there's a trip in your area that, we, that we're working on with somebody. I see some animal questions too, some dairy, uh, some cow questions. So. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So definitely go on and watch one of one or two or 10 of our dairy um, VFTs because you'll learn an awful lot. <laughs> and I, I know there's so many questions here. I don't know if we can get to all of them. Um, but if you have anything you want to ask, again, uh, go ahead and, and put that in there. Um, there somebody has asked about, um, uh, gosh, Lots of ideas, cranberry bog. Um, Bring it, I, I want all the ideas. <laughs> yeah, Bring we would love that. And um, you know, hopefully you've been on one of these, but I think having a network of people who are thinking about this and how can we bring these things to life as much as possible. Like somebody else said on here, it's everything with, but the smell at a livestock farm. But we also do the row crop farms too. And I think the sky's the limit for what can be done here and as we move forward you know we may be thinking about um, sponsorships beyond the commodity groups and um, how we figure out ways to to grow this without putting you know, we don't want to put the burden on uh, educators because really this helps to reach the goals for the agricultural industry to share to share our stories and, and make sure that people understand uh, the value of the food and how it's produced because consumers are asking for that. So if we can do that, we can get more people almost on the farm uh, to experience something that is almost just like a farm. That's a, that's definitely a win for the food and agriculture industry. I, I see a question here that says uh, as well, what's the process you go through and somebody reaches out wanting to put together an opportunity? Well, it, it's all based upon listening. Uh, we listen, we'll sit down, we'll, we'll have a call with you, kind of explain how the process works and and we spend a lot of time listening. What do you want out of uh, out of a program? And that's what we do with with our, our friends here in Michigan. We sit down every time, like, hey, we're thinking about a new idea. I said, I'm all ears. Let's we'll figure out how to make it work. Truly, try to customize it as much as possible, and then we we turn around, and provide the best recommendation platform, you know, the tweaks that we need to do here and there to make it work for that audience and, and what they want to do. So. And people have asked about cost and pricing, and all of that is on our website, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, we typically do a package of five um, farm trips for $10,000. Um, and the reason that we ask to do five is because there's so much effort and time invested up front in doing the um, just development and training and getting the farmers comfortable and the test, doing the technology testing and all of that. But again, none of that is uh, on the educators at all. So, um, that's our the commodity group partners that we have are the ones covering that cost at this time. And it goes and that price per farm trip goes down with the more trips that you do. Uh, so in, in conclusion, I know we only got a couple minutes here. So I, I do want to share um, uh, just one more thing with you here real quickly. Hopefully you can uh, see that screen, but uh, what we find, we do evaluations with folks. You know, we, we do pre-evaluations, we do post-evaluations, kind of see where we're moving the needle and things. And these things are just, the uh, classrooms, our teachers, all the evaluations we get are just so positive. We'll get a few comments here and there about the technology, what, you know, maybe there was a hiccup or something, maybe they had problems on their end, but uh, universally across all of our partners, all our trips we do, we get about 90% of folks that take these tours say they want to do them again. We get people to come back year after year after year after year to take these tours. Nine out of 10 of the teachers that complete our evaluations prefer the live 
trips over anything that's pre-recorded because of that that buy-in that engagement being able to ask questions like we did here and, and on average they rank their trips out of a scale of one to ten and eight and a half so i think hey you know we're teachers here getting a b all the time isn't too bad uh, when we're working with, with live technology and potential hiccups and stuff like that. So um, I do want to include our, our contact information here. If anybody wants to reach out to us, there are our websites, there's our phone numbers, emails. Uh, we're, we're happy to talk and, and share information. Or if you have more questions about the cows on Jolene's farm, uh, please go ahead and, and ask uh, them as well. So um, Lisa, I hope that we, um, we covered everything that we wanted to here. And if there's additional questions that you have from folks that, that you'd like us to answer, uh, for anybody who was uh, connected, we'd be more than happy to to follow up and answer those questions as well. Yeah, that'd be great. But we'd like to also get Jolene's email address. I know that there were some cow questions that I think some folks would like to follow up on. So, uh, but just appreciate Dan and Amy, Jolene, Melanie, Brad for taking us on a tour of a dairy farm. Like I said, we uh, uh, farm tours are a big part of our national conference up. That is what makes us unique among teacher conferences and why we're so popular. And uh, this was a nice, uh, nice touch. You know, um, this uh, is the last workshop for today, but certainly an enjoyable one. You have a lovely operation, Jolene. Just, it's just beautiful. It's just cool to see the animals and see what good care you take of them too. So, uh, and Dan, you Thank know, you. Melanie and Amy you know, and Brad, it's nice to have technology experts when we're running these virtual meetings for those of us who aren't so technologically inclined. So certainly appreciate it and appreciate everybody's time. And just wrapping it up uh, for all of those who joined us today, thank you. And uh, we will be providing the videotape of this session and um, also a uh, link to a certificate that you can download and fill out and submit for credit. So with that, thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you. All of you, uh, Dan and everybody with Virtual Farm Trips and Jolene and your beautiful dairy farm in Michigan. Best of uh, luck to all of you and uh, everybody have a good evening. And we'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time for the next workshop uh, to those attendees still on. So thanks everybody. Thank you, we appreciate it. Enjoy your evening. Thanks, you too.